One of Australia's largest energy providers, AGL, will be forced to spend more than a million dollars on community projects and rectification works after one of its ageing coal-fired power stations polluted a creek near Musselbrook. 1,440 cubic metres of coal ash waste was released into a dry creek bed, as Mike Pritchard reports. This is one of the larger EUs that that I've seen uh, in recent years and it reflects the significance of the the potential harm to the environment. Adam Gilligan of the Environment Protection Authority. His organisation has delivered a million dollar penalty to AGL. One of its ageing coal-fired power stations polluted a creek in the Hunter Valley. A pipeline carrying coal ash waste burst at the Bayswater facility. The EPA will now enter into what is called an enforced undertaking payment agreement with AGL. Half of the money will go to community environment projects and the remainder to rectification works and training. But Jocelyn McGarity, a lawyer with Environment Justice Australia, says AGL's site has a long history of environmental breaches and should be held criminally responsible. One of the ways that you can affect deterrence and for polluters to be held to account is through prosecution. And these alleged offences are criminal environmental offences under the Protection of the Environment Operations Act. So certainly if there was merit in the EPA prosecuting, um, which, you know, based on based on the copy of the EU that's available, um, the EPA certainly considered that offences had been committed, then they could have prosecuted that in a court of law, come away with a result against AGL. When you look at the compliance history um, at Bayswater over the past five years, there's been 52 licensed non-compliances, a number of fines totalling over $100,000. There's been a series of of full compliance at this site. The fact is that uh, this enforceable undertaking, whilst it does result some money being allocated to environmental improvements, it also means that in this instance the EPA has decided not to prosecute AGL, which meant that you could say that perhaps this incident was foreseeable, um, and that's foreseeable by AGL, but also by the regulator. Um, So I think that's why some community groups in this particular instance are feeling a bit let down. The EPA says an enforceable undertaking is appropriate under the circumstances. Adam Gilligan again. Companies only enter into enforceable undertakings when they're aware that they're at risk of prosecution and and substantial penalties before the courts. What we aim to do through this is find a middle ground, still hold the company to account while getting those benefits both on-site and off-site. And it reflects uh, the significance of the the potential harm to the environment, um, but also a strong commitment from AGL to... Uh, make sure that they take steps to prevent a a recurrence of this into the future. But Paul Wynn from the Hunter Community Environment Centre says the power stations should be prosecuted and the overall coal ash waste problem addressed. As New South Wales coal-fired power stations progressively retire over the next 20 years, we're going to see power companies increasingly saving costs or trying to save costs on essential maintenance. And this is going to escalate as these power stations reach their design lives or end end of design lives. What we want to see is the government take the responsibility uh, for these these risks, these these risky operations with these old coal-fired power stations and actually uh, encourage the power stations to reuse the ash so they don't have to dump it in on-site containment facilities. This is something we've been asking for for, for for a couple of years now of the state government, and we really do we want to see them actually start to take that responsibility more seriously and, and put a levy on, on coal ash. So it, it incentivizes the companies to actually reuse the ash rather than to pipe it out through these um, you know, aging facilities into, into um, large containment facilities that are just going to leach and, and, and pollute the environment um, for many, many decades. In a statement, AGL says it takes the environmental obligations seriously and is committed to ensuring that environmental improvement outcomes are achieved. Mike Pritchard with that report. And a parliamentary inquiry is looking into the costs for remediation of sites containing coal ash across New South Wales. That's chaired by Labor MP Daniel Mookie, the Shadow Minister for Small Business. I asked him this morning for his reaction to the news about this incident. A pollution event of this type is massive and as far as we can tell it's the biggest example of a pollution caused by coal ash in a very long time. It's always uh, 
pleasing to see the regulator do their job here. But there are questions that the regulator has got to answer about uh, why this was not their prosecution was not public, why it took AGL informing the Public Works Committee for the Hunter region to learn that there was this massive pollution event. And of course there are serious questions to be answered by, the, by AGL as well as to why their systems failed and that failure resulted in a lot of coal ash being released into a creek. Well they said in a statement that they take their responsibilities seriously... Yeah, well, it's worrying that there's been more than one incident by this power company over a two-year, three-year period of time. What the committee learnt was that AGL uh, had already been fined for an incident like this before. And I, I think that the community is entitled to now judge AGL not by their words but by their actions. If incidents like this repeat, uh, serious questions will be asked about whether or not they're fit to hold a licence and serious questions will be asked of the regulator as to whether or not they're doing their job properly as well. So you're sitting on an inquiry, chairing the inquiry into coal ash. What do you think of the broader issues here for, for the management of that product generally? Uh, well, it's clear that for as long as we have coal power plants, we're going to have coal ash. What we need to be doing uh, in New South Wales is turning this waste product into an economic resource. The most amazing thing that the committee has heard is that there is a consensus from the environmental groups as well as the power companies that they'd like to be turning coal ash into a substance that can be used in cement production, that can be used in road production. It is better for us to build an industry to recycle and reuse coal ash than it is to effectively bury it in the ground, which is what we're doing now. Uh, so our immediate priority as a, as a committee is to create the legal framework that would allow coal ash to be used as a substance uh, that can be reused. What we also have to do is to make sure that the coal ash that's already in the ground and the coal ash that's due to be buried will be done safely. And it's clear that between the two regulators and the power companies, more work needs to be done to make sure that the community can have confidence that this substance is being handled appropriately and uh, treated carefully with all the major environmental risks to water being managed appropriately. Hunter Community Environment Centre is calling for a $20 levy on every tonne of coal ash dumped in dams. Is that a good idea? Is that something that you're going to recommend? Uh, well, it's certainly an idea that the Hunter Environmental Centre has been campaigning on for a while. I'd say to them and I'd say to others who, who believe that that is the appropriate response, a charge like that proposed by the Hunter Environmental Centre would only be effective if there's a buyer of the product. And the, per the organisation that is best positioned to be buying coal ash is Transport for New South Wales as they build New South Wales roads. Questions we're asking of Transport for New South Wales is why aren't they going faster about exploring the reuse of coal ash in road construction? That's uh, Labor MP Daniel Mookie, the Shadow Minister for Small Business, talking about the implications of that decision about the uh, power plant Bayswater and their million dollar remediation bill. On the country hour, it's 27 past 12.